Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. Now, this is the second video for the day. If you haven't checked out the first video, which is on systems of differential equations, go ahead and check it out. I think it premiered about um, two hours ago, maybe something like that. Anyways, we have a polynomial equation, x minus one multiplied by p of x, which is a polynomial equals x cubed plus nx. And we're going to be solving for what? Good question, right? We're going to be solving for n. We're not going to solve for p of x. Well, actually, I think we can solve for both, right? Let's give it a try. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this too easy? Just divide both sides by x minus 1 and you're done. Okay, let's give it a try. I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1 and that's going to give me x cubed plus nx divided by x minus 1. But the million dollar question is, this looks like a rational function to me. It's not a polynomial, is it? I mean, if it's a polynomial, it shouldn't have a denominator. So what is the catch? Well, the thing is, you need to simplify this. But how do you simplify? Maybe we can divide? Sure, why not? How do you divide? There's a couple of different ways to do it. You can use polynomial division or synthetic division. Let's do the long division x minus 1. Unfortunately, we do it this way in the US. So if you do it differently, I apologize. Sometimes people will divide it the other way around, okay? Like Turkey, for example, divides it like that, okay? Anyways, let's do it this way. Get used to it, hopefully. Now, x goes into x cubed x squared times, and we're going to distribute x cubed minus x squared. And then in order to subtract, we need to negate and add. That's going to give us x squared plus nx. And then we're going to have x into x squared x times plus x. If you distribute, you get x squared minus x. And then if you negate and add again, you get nx plus x, which is n plus 1 multiplied by x. Now, does x go into that? Absolutely. How many times? n plus 1 times. So let's go ahead and expand it like this a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and distribute n plus 1. It's going to give us n plus 1 times x minus n plus 1. I put it in parentheses because we're going to negate and add. So in other words, we're subtracting. And at the end, we get n plus 1. Nice. But what's the problem? The problem is we divided it, right? Let's go ahead and write the result. So you, when you divide a polynomial by another polynomial, it doesn't guarantee that the numerator will always be divisible by the denominator. In other words, you won't always get a polynomial by dividing two polynomials unless the denominator is one of the factors or if they share a common factor. Okay, let's find out. Dig a little deeper. We have the quotient, which is x squared plus x plus n plus 1, right? Plus a remainder, which is n plus 1. So what I'm supposed to do is divide it up by x minus 1 again. Because if you multiply everything by x minus 1, you should get the original somehow, right? Hopefully get the idea. Now, what am I going to get out of this, right? Did I get the answer? Yes, but you expect to get a polynomial, right? Or you are expected to get a polynomial from here. How do we know that? Because we know that p of x is a polynomial. So this is p of x, isn't it? So this is supposed to be a polynomial. What is that supposed to mean? It means that there should be no rational piece like this. This is useless, unnecessary, totally useless. What is that supposed to mean? It needs to disappear, poof, gone. So in other words, the remainder must be zero, which means n plus one is zero because x can't be zero, obviously, or one. So n equals negative one is the number n we're looking for. Again, this does not solve the problem completely because we want to find p of x as well. So what can we do? Plug it in. If you plug it in, you're going to get p of x equals x cubed minus x divided by x minus 1, which is supposed to equal x squared plus x plus n plus 1, but n is negative 1, so that's just going to be x squared plus x, right? And plus 0. So that's the answer. In other words, p of x is x squared plus x and n is negative 1. Great. We just solved the problem, but is that the only way to do it? No, there's a second way to do it. Let me show you. It's really cool, but let me know what you think about 
both methods, even though I probably didn't call this the first method, did I? Now I did. So now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. It's never too late, right? So here's how the second method works. We have a polynomial equation. So you gotta think carefully about polynomials. Yeah, obviously, you could use long division with the first method. It takes a long time though, right? That's why it's called long division. I guess somebody, people in the past were like doing these things and they were like too bored. And they said, oh, this is too long. This is taking forever. Let's call it long division. Anyways, so let's go ahead and see how we can find the n instantaneously. You know how? Here's the thing. Since P, P of x is a polynomial, P of x multiplied by x minus 1 is a polynomial. So both sides are polynomials. How nice is that? That means the domain is real numbers, which means x can be anything. Anything? Yes, including 1. Why? Because if you replace x with 2, think about it. You get P of 2 equals something. How is that helpful? We don't even know what P of 2 is, right? So that's not going to help at all. Instead, we can be smart and replace x with 1 because of annihilation, cancellation, whatever you call it, right? Termination. If x is 1, you get a 0 on the left-hand side, a big fat 0. On the right-hand side, you get 1 plus n. Uh-oh, that was so quick, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. This is the way it's supposed to be done. But again, which method you like better, it's totally up to you. That's your choice. So we found n pretty quick. How do we find p of x? If you replace n with negative 1, does that give us the solution? Well, sort of. Let me show you that one as well, because that's fun. So we're going to go ahead and replace n with negative 1. So that's going to give us the following. And next thing, we're going to divide both sides by x minus 1, because why not, right? Of course, our goal is to find p of x. We found n x minus 1 cancels out. Of course, you need to assume x does not equal 1, but that doesn't matter because once it cancels out, it can't be. So it's kind of one of those weird scenarios. So this is p of x, but it's supposed to be a polynomial, right? So we're going to factor the numerator. Why? Because we can. <laughs> so factor out an x, you'll get x squared minus 1. And x squared minus 1 happens to be Difference of two squares. Did you know that? It's a very important formula. I would say difference of two squares and Pythagorean theorem are two very important things in math. Okay. X squared minus one can be factored into x plus one and x minus one. And then we can divide by x minus one. Now cancel out x minus one. Ta-da! We get the value of p of x in its glory. And that's a polynomial. If you distribute, p of x becomes x squared plus x. And that's it. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to watch other videos, including the today's first video. And be safe and bye-bye.